an additive effect when it interacts with the layers below it. All right, now let's add a displacement map. In the project panel, drop the displacement precomposition into our main composition. And once it's there, turn off its eyeball switch so that we can't see it. Then, with the logo layer selected, choose Effect Distort Displacement Map. Then, go into the Effects panel and set the Displacement Map layer to our Displacement Precomp layer. A quick RAM preview, and we can see that our stroke is now looking a bit distorted and wiggly. Okay, let's duplicate the logo layer by selecting it and hitting Control D or Command D if you're on a Macintosh, and then select the bottom of the two duplicates and hit Enter to rename it to Logo Glow. Once that's done, with the Logo Glow layer selected, go into the Effects panel and set the stroke color from pale green to an intense green. Yeah, you know that acid green that they use so much in the Matrix? Oh yeah. Then, with the Logo Glow layer selected, let's add a blur to it by choosing Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. Then, in the Effects panel, set the blurriness property up to 6. This creates a nice outer glow of green with a more intense light green in the center, kind of like a lightsaber or a phaser blast. Oh, that's right, my sci-fi loving friends. I am one of you. Okay, in the timeline, let's select the logo and logo glow layers and then hit Control D to duplicate them. Then drag them down in the stack order to sit below the originals. All right, next, Let's make all of our logo layers a child of our controller null. Select all of those layers and then in the parent column, grab any one of their pick whips and drag it to the controller null. Now any transformations that we make to the controller null will happen to all of our logo layers as well. Next, let's wiggle our null layers position. With the null layer selected, hit P to reveal the position property. Then Alt-click on the Position Properties stopwatch to add an expression and type wiggle open parentheses 30 comma 7 close parentheses which makes the null wiggle its position a lot. If we turn on motion blur for all of our logo layers and for the composition as well when we do a RAM preview we can see some nice motion blur being applied to the effect. Okay. I want to use this animation in two places on the screen at once, and the best way to do that is to pre-compose all of our logo layers and anything else connected to them. So I'll select the displacement map, the null object, and all of my logo layers, and with those selected, I'll choose Layer, Pre-Compose. I don't need to open the pre-composition for now, so I'll just make sure that Open New Composition is not selected. Also. I'll name the composition Logo. Then I'll hit OK to create the new composition. As you can see, all of my layers have been moved out of this composition and only a single layer is left in its place. Then I'll select the Logo layer and in the timeline I'll set its transfer mode to Add. Then I'll make the Logo layer a 3D layer by turning on its 3D layer switch. Once that's done, I'll duplicate the logo layer by hitting Control D and then I'll select the bottom of the two layers and I'll hit Enter to rename it to Logo Floor. Once it's been renamed, I'll use the Rotation tool to rotate the layer in 3D space and I'll also position it in 3D space as well. Ultimately, I'm trying to make this layer look like it's lying on the floor. This might take a little eyeballing. Next, with the logo floor layer selected, I'll add a blur by choosing Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. Then, in the Effects panel, set the blurriness property up to 40. Okay, last few steps here. With the logo floor layer selected, choose Effect, Distort, Bezier Warp. The Bezier Warp tool allows you to warp the shape with different warp handles. So, 
grab hold of the layer's bottom corner handles, although in this case it's actually the top because we've rotated the layer in 3D space, and drag them closer to the center. Then, grab hold of the center handles at the top of the layer, which in our case is actually the bottom part of the screen, and drag them out. As you can see, it creates a sort of distance effect so that the logo's light cast is smaller, closer to the logo, and larger as it gets further away. Okay, one last thing. As light moves away from a light source, it dims. So, select the logo floor layer, and then choose Effect, Transition, Linear Wipe. In the Effects panel, set the transition completion to 30, the wipe angle to 180, and the feather to 250. You'll probably need to play with these values for whatever project you're working on. At this point, you may want to adjust the positioning of your logo layer relative to the floor layer and possibly even move it back in 3D space a bit. But that's up to you. Obviously, the effect we're trying to get here is that our logo is casting light onto the floor, but you need to know where you want to position that in space. Okay, a quick RAM preview, and we've got some light writing. But it's not perfect, or rather, it's perhaps a little too perfect. I would love to be able to add some random flashes of light, and also it would be great if, as it's being drawn onto the screen, there was a hot spot at the head of each stroke. Well, for that, we're going to need to do a little more work with some expressions. And since this tutorial has gone on for a lot longer than I expected it to, we'll have to cover that in another podcast. For now, I think you've got some good stuff to work with here. Oh, hey, if you like this tutorial and you want to show some love, don't forget to check out all of my Creative Cow Master Series training DVDs, including my most recent one, Internet Killed the Video Star, a guide to creating video for the web, which you can find at training.creativecow.net. Obviously, that's not an After Effects DVD, but I think it's essential training for any video artist who wants to put their work up on the web. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.